football from happening at FedEx Field. The enthusiasm for football here on the East Coast always in the air. These folks are ready as their guys get set to match up with the Dallas Cowboys. This fielded right at the goal line. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Washington offense ready to take over. And you see Taylor Heineke at the helm in his second season with the football team. Let's face it, you don't see too many Old Dominion alums suiting up under center in the NFL. And in fact, Taylor Heineke, the first ODU quarterback to suit up for a regular season game, not to mention doing well in the playoffs. This guy's an absolute fighter. Fought for every chance he's had in this league. Attitude, determination, those carry over to his teammates very well. The first carry for the Memphis man, Antonio Gibson. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Well, that's just a pile of bodies there, and that's when you kind of find out who's a tough guy, right? Who can stand up and make a play? It was only a three-yard run, but for both sides, they had to walk away from that feeling like, okay, I can stand up when the going gets tough in here. Now a toss left side into the hands of his tight end. That throw good for only a couple that brings up third down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. That's a pretty good opening possession defensively. And you know the goal is to make something of a statement, especially on the road with your first defensive possession, isn't it? Go right out and establish yourselves and let them know this is going to be tough going all game long. So on fourth down, Washington going to call on Tress Way to punt it away. Back deep, C.D. Lamb. Yeah, call it 38 yards on the punt, no return. And the Cowboys will take over the football with a first and 10. The Dallas Cowboys and Dak Prescott set to go on offense for the first time. And with Dak at the controls, his sixth season under center now as the Cowboys quarterback. You remember last year he got off to an incredible start, threw for over 450 yards in three straight weeks, including 502 against the Cleveland Browns in week four. Just four yards short of the franchise's single game record. Then came his injury in week five. Pretty well derailed the Cowboys season. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10, just shy of the 30. Meanwhile, Prescott's throw pulled in by Lamb. He'll be hit down at the 33, five yards on the play. Oh, I see you nodding your head along with me, partner, because it's pretty obvious what they were trying to do there on the drag route. With his speed, they're hoping he can turn the corner and maybe take this to the house. But that was excellent work defensively to make sure once he caught it, he wasn't going anywhere. Zeke with a shake and bake, taking it right down Broadway. Pass the 20. Touchdown, Cowboys. Ezekiel Elliott, 67 yards. And the Cowboys on just two plays have taken the lead. Well, you've got to like that start on both sides of the football. You force the three and out, and then you score on your first drive. Well, I know someone who doesn't like that start. Well, yeah, the other side. Yeah, they don't like that <laughs> at all, right? This is not the way it's supposed to be. But what you just described, that's team football. All right, when you get a three and out, 
You're supposed to take advantage of it on the offensive side of the ball. You said, thank you very much for getting us the rock. Let's put it in the end zone, and they did exactly that. The point after threw the raindrops up and good. And it's now a 7-0 game. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Touchdown at Zerline. He'll kick it away. And Carter deciding not to bring this one out. Now Washington going to retake the field for drive number two. And the last drive, their first drive, three and out. What changes here, if anything? I think it's making sure the guys that you trust the most with the ball, the biggest playmakers you have, that they touch it on this possession to try and get things moving. So get it to the horses. Without a doubt. They're the ones that typically end up in the end zone. Here's Gibson to start the drive. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll make it second and a foot or so. Part, I remember a coaching friend of mine used to tell his running backs before games, make sure you run and jog with your offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking when those big behemoths start to create space for you up front. He did a pretty good job of just following those guys through there for a nice explosive run. I know what you're thinking out there. I know a lot of you are thinking, take a shot downfield. It's a great spot for it. I'd say maybe later in the game, definitely in the second half. But right now, I think they were just trying to get some momentum built. Get a first down, pick it up, and keep moving. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Working out of the gun. Here's Heineke. Throw right side, going to be caught by Seals Jones. Three yards the game there, second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now looming. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. On third and one, here's Heineke. That's complete. Terry McLaurin with it. And he's got a first down as he's up to the 48. I think defensively, you're okay with that. Here in the first quarter, he's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on, and I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where Every series, they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. First down, Heineke. Oh, this one incomplete. The pressure got to him as he released it, and it's second down. And I can see the officials kind of looking at each other down there, silently wondering, does this meet the level of grounding? Fortunately, he did have a receiver in the area, but I have seen less obvious throwaways called as penalties. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. 
Back to the ground with Gibson. And he'll be brought down right at midfield after a gain of only a couple. When we talk about defenders, specifically linebackers, keeping their eyes in the right spot. He had that eye down the entire time. And you know that's not easily done because they throw a lot of misdirection at you. They try and fool you and get your eyes in the wrong place. But you're right about that one. He correctly figured that one out and made a really nice play. And he finds McLaurin. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys 39. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful of one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. A give to Gibson running right. The safety, Keanu Neal there to make the tackle. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. A run here for J.D. McKissick. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Sports. So two of two on third down conversions on this drive, and now they face a third and three here. From the shotgun, it's Heineke. And he finds Seals Jones complete. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then, of course, they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play, and that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. On first and ten, it's Gibson, and he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, any lane that might have been open there was closed pretty quickly, and that was because the defensive front they won that battle at the point of attack at the line of scrimmage. They used great leverage, held their spot, and stacked him up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Heineke. Into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked up by DeMonte Casey. OK, partner. No surprise to you. I'm going to look at this from the defensive perspective. In the rain, you have to be more cautious trying to cover passing routes. Why? The offense knows where they're going with the football. The receiver knows the route he's going to run. You have to make sure you keep your footing underneath you. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 17-yard line. He'll hand it off to Elliott to begin the drive. <laughs> 75 yards rushing for him as he has been tough to stop here in this first half. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them 
can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. Play fake. Here's Prescott. Throw left side complete. That's Schultz. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down. A first down carry by Elliott, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to that and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Elliott going to get it again on second down. And this is going to be a Cowboys first down as the tackle made it about the 43-yard line. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. So after a good run by Zeke, another first and 10. Prescott to throw it. He'll fire deep downfield for Lamb. And a high throw there as this is knocked away, down to the ground and incomplete. Yes, sir. How about an out of boy there on first down? Got his hand in and knocked it away. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. A handoff left to Elliott. And he'll push his way up to about the 44 here. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves him with third and nine looming. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? On third down, it's Prescott. And he's got Ezekiel Elliott. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. The veteran in his first year with the Cowboys, Brian Anger, on to punt. DeAndre Carter back deep, and he'll get... We remind you that coming up in two minutes' time, we'll hand you off to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman will have highlights and analysis of this first half of action. And that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. This team is not going to make it easy for you. They're a physical group, and we just saw it there on that play. They came in, made the contact, just as he's trying to haul it in. Now they face a third and ten after back-to-back -back incompletions. A handoff running left is Gibson, and he'll be stopped here well short of the first down at the 24-yard line. Now a timeout called for by the defense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Here's Tressway now, as he's on to punt for Washington. Gets around him. A seven-yard return following a punt of 45 yards. And out will come the offense as they take over. The time to get another look at this Cowboys offense. 
They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Off play action to Elliott. Here's Prescott. Letting one fly deep for Cooper. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. William Jackson with a pick. Well, certainly not his best throw that time and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field. Guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. First and ten, Heineke. And the Cowboys pressure gets there this time for the sack. Osa Odigizawa busting through to get him for a loss of six. Protection certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Another try after the first down sack. Heineke. And that one caught. It's the rookie, Diami Brown. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. And Washington now going to use the first of their three timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. on third and two. This will be caught once again by Brown. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Throwing, Heineke. And this is caught, it's Brown. And he will have a first down here as they get into field goal range down just shy of the 20. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage as shown by that last play. Again, it's Heineke. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. And now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. to throw again on second down. Heineke. And that will be incomplete with a clock down now to 13 seconds. Out routes are always timing routes. And if the timing's off just a little bit, 
They can really throw off a play. It looked like he led him a little too much there. Yeah, there was a fraction of a second because he caught it, just couldn't stay in bounds. They tried the throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. And they'll throw again, Heineke. And he's going to be dropped back at the 15-yard line. He'll lose a couple on what should be the final play of the first half. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime report. This one's been a hard fought battle to this point. Seven nothing is the score, with neither offense really able to get on track. But let's not waste any time. We'll get you right back out to Brandon and Charles for the second half. Okay, coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. second half. This is Tony Pollard. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Dak and the Cowboys ready for their next possession. And he's had some time to chew on that interception he threw on his last drive back in the first half. Well, normally we say, well, get him right back out on the field and play again, right? But as you mentioned, had the halftime, had to stew about it a little bit. Maybe he'll have a chance to relax a little and kind of laugh and chuckle and let it go. He'll hope to respond positively here to start the third quarter. So Prescott to the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 23. Second half starts with a carry by Elliott. Oh, fighting off the defender. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. The 101 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They keep on the ground with Elliott. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. And that's what this defense is going to need to do more in the second half. Good pressure that time. Forces some indecision in the backfield. He's going to wind up being taken down for a nice loss. Second and 11 now. Play action now, Prescott. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. An important play right here, third and ten. And I would expect pressure here. Now Prescott. And he'll go underneath here to Elliott. 
And he's going to be taken down at the 39, clearly short of the first by a few yards. How about that strategy there, Brandon? Third down, they just said, we've got faith in our tacklers. We'll give you the short stuff and just decided to protect the sticks. So every time I hear fans telling me tackling's not a part of the game anymore, plays like that, I can clip and save and show them you have to tackle well if you want to be a good defense. Here's Brian Anger now as he's on to punt for Dallas. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. Amazing. Perfectly placed. If that ball goes one extra yard, maybe not even an extra yard, the starting point is the 20. So there is a reason that a lot of punters are also excellent golfers. They know distance control. You know what else they have? Same groove motion over and over. Once they have that down, it repeats under pressure. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. Showed some flash on the run, but he will be brought down shy of his ten. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. But both teams practice this situation. And this time, the guys on offense won and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave them some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage or do you play normal defense? They may have backed them off with that run. And this one incomplete. Too much contact to hold on to that one, and it's third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Third and short yardage, Heineke. And he'll find his tight end, Seals Jones. And they're going to get the first down here across the 15-yard line. Like so many tight ends nowadays, they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work, and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down. So that last play gives him a little more space now. Here's first and 10 at the 16-yard line. Off the play fake, Heineke. Open man is the tight end, John Bates. And mark him down way up close to the 40 at the 39. A couple of first downs right in succession, and this is an offense that can really use a good drive, and they're off to a fast start here. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They go play action. Now Heineke. His throw complete right side to Bates, the tight end. And now time will be called here as Washington has an injured player down on the field. While the training staff takes a peek, we'll take a break. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. And here's a give to Gibson. And he maybe makes it back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. 
But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Heineke now looking to throw on first down. Oh, he was hit as he threw it there, and that one winds up incomplete. We've got to give out a little applause on that play. It has to go to the defense. More good work by them. They've taken away the passing lanes all game long, and you can see the frustration that it's causing because he just about threw that one into the first row. Third quarter of a tight football game as we come up on a second and ten. Heineke's throw taken in by Samuel. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. Well, if you do read man coverage, Brandon, the drag route's a pretty good one to run against it because you're running away from people on it. So it's third and six, and this will be the eighth play of the drive. From the gun, Heineke. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, and certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. Here's Tressway now as he's on to punt for Washington. And now a low liner. I think he mishit him. And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. Zeke and the Cowboys ready to begin their next drive. He's up over 100 yards, and he'll be looking to get in the end zone again. Has a tremendous nose for it, doesn't he? The ability to pile up yardage and find the end zone, that's the combination you want in your runner. That's a combination any coach wants, and we'll see if he can find that end zone once more. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at the 33-yard line. They start on the ground with Elliott. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. He'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Well, that's not an easy play for a defensive end because most of his responsibility has him getting upfield and working. But how about his vision to see where the play was going, crashed down inside, and tackled him for a loss. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Out of the gun, here's Prescott. He'll get this out wide here to Elliott. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Third and short yardage, Prescott. And he finds his target, it's Schultz. And he will have a Cowboys first down, I do believe. Yes, he's got it by about a yard there on third and three. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. They'll run on first down. It's Elliott. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. 111 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Well, that's a carry they have to be satisfied with. And throughout this game, they've been satisfied with what he's given them. Whenever they've needed a big run, a first down, he's the guy they've turned to. And it doesn't matter what the defense thinks. They feel like they've got the confidence to keep handing it to him and keep picking up good yardage.
This is Elliott. And he's going to get stopped up quickly. Give him a yard down to the 43. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. From the shotgun, a give to Elliott. And he takes it down to the 40 with a pickup of four. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. The Cowboys on third down. Just one for three thus far. This will be third and six. Now Prescott. And this is caught. Amari Cooper. And he will have a Cowboys first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that certainly appears to be a critical conversion right there because not only do they keep the drive going, they take valuable time off the clock as well. They have to feel really good about that last completion. On first down, it's Elliott. And the stiff arm made it a pretty little run, not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards. And it'll be second and very short. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters. No reason to lighten up now. And he's going to be brought down just shy of the five at the six. But they didn't accomplish their goal. They didn't get a stop there, gave up another first down. They have all three timeouts in their pocket. I think defensively, you've got to start thinking about using them here. I was just going to ask you at what point you think now's the go time? I think now's the go time. I don't think you sit back and wait because they can take a lot of time off the clock between plays and run three to four and really put you in a stressful spot. Now Elliott. That he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. Well, that was absolutely ideal for them, wasn't it? Trying to salt this game away. I think one of my kids just graduated in the amount of time they had the football. That was absolutely impressive. Everybody wants those salt away the game drives. What makes them successful? Well, when you're able to mix run pass, when you're able to control the football and stay ahead of the chains, I'm using every cliche I know, <laughs> but that's how you get it done because you're not taking negative plays and that way you're able to run what you want to run when you get a chance to call it. Zerline connects on the extra point and it's now 14 to nothing. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. DeAndre Carter returning it. And he won't quite make it to the 25. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. 
And you're still in this game. I mean, yeah, you haven't scored. Offense obviously has struggled, but you're only two scores down, so all hope not lost. Not at all, because we're talking about the NFL, and teams can score fast in this league. Quick strikes, you're right back in it. You're exactly right, keeping hope alive. Heineke on first down. And that one's going to be off target and incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap and he locked in on his target. But he was covered quite well and that one's incomplete. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Here's Heineke. That's caught over the middle by Seals Jones. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. You got the big lead defensively, willing to give them that underneath stuff, right? And this is why you work on your tackling. Tackle them after the catch, inbounds, keep the clock running. Just go ahead and bleed the game out that way. On third down, here's Gibson. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Yeah. 49 yards rushing for him now as he's run it 11 times. So it's Washington with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and ten as they search for a late score. Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. Nice game there, partner, but you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. A first down throw for Heineke. He's going to flip one out here to his running back. Three yards the gain there, second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Heineke's throw into the hands of McLaurin. And he's going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at the Cowboys' 31-yard line. running as Washington will try and hurry up to the air again Heineke and inside the 20 before he's brought down and this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo a nice throw there and they put together a very strong drive as a response So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Heineke to throw it. That's complete to his tight end, Seals Jones. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. Now Washington going to use the second of their three timeouts as they get it with 26 seconds to go in the football game. To throw is Heineke. And this is caught for a touchdown. So hang on now. Things just got a little bit more interesting here in the final minute. I'm not sure win-win is the proper term here, but it certainly felt like it. They got the touchdown they needed, 
But if I'm on the defensive side of the ball, okay, you got the touchdown, but it sure took you a long time. Yeah, because offensively there, you're probably hoping for a one to five play drive. That one ate up a little more time than they were hoping. You're exactly right. And if you have that one to five play drive, you actually build up momentum and even more hope when they had to slog their way downfield. They got the touchdown, but it's almost like, ah. Yeah, yeah you know, it doesn't you kinda, feel right. Exactly. <laughs> Extra point by Sly is up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. So still a chance with just over 20 seconds to go, but they need to get this one back, no doubt. And this is going to be recovered by the hand team. And that should just about put a capper on this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number, kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. The Cowboys on their way to victory as they take an knee. Now Washington going to go ahead and use their final timeout as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. Prescott, he goes down to a knee, and that should just about do it. So this one will end in a victory for the Dallas Cowboys. And it was their defense that really paved the way to this victory as they allowed the one touchdown, and that was all she wrote. Almost want to do the defense chant right now, right? Defense with a couple of claps in there, but no one wants to hear that from me. Let's just talk about how they got it done, though. When you take care of every aspect of the game, shut down the run, control the airways, right? Make sure the quarterback is harassed. This type of performance you get. They can't fashion together any offense, no consistency, and they just took control. So that'll do it for my partner, Charles Davis, and the best darn crew in the industry. I'm Brandon Gaunt, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. With that, we sign off from Landover.